In my previous video I've shown how I add these braces to make this uh, stiffer and perpendicular. And yeah, in this video I'm going to take them off. Hi, I'm John from Proper Printing, and yeah, as I've already said in the beginning of the video, I'm going to uh, take the braces off. I first want to mention one thing. I've talked about the bed leveling knobs, and yeah, I left you guys uh, hanging there, because yeah, what I did mention was that the bed leveling knobs, uh, as I've designed them, they work best together with a uh, adjustable z-stop i've used this one from uh, zep2 i will uh, put a link into the description of uh, this thing and if you replace the nozzle or the hot end then um, yeah you can adjust the, the z-stop itself so the bed will stay level at all times and yeah you can just use this to adjust the height of the homing position yeah about swapping the hot ends i already have added the, uh, this swappable hot end. Why I have added this already is not just to promote it. Yeah, I still think that every printer needs one. But besides that, I will use this too to level the bed perfectly. But that will be later in this video. Why I will remove these two, that, that's an, a whole different story. This printer, it is good. But in my opinion, certainly not perfect. Um, I've seen that this still moves. Yeah, because there is some movement here, I'm sure that it uh, doesn't go well with, uh, well, it doesn't combine well with uh, accuracy. Uh, what I've done on my CR10 to prevent this is to add a dual Z axis. Like, this spindle here but also on this side and that's what I'm going to add to this machine in this video because I've designed one and the one I've designed is combined with uh, these two corner pieces so uh, yeah I'm very happy with the design so I will get right to it okay first uh, thing I'm going to do is remove the power supply The part you will need for this upgrade is a closed loop timing belt of 696 millimeters, a 300 millimeter lead screw, two 60 teeth pulleys. These two pulleys together with this timing belt, the center distance of this is exactly the same distance as these two beams. You don't have to cut anything or have to make a closed loop timing belt yourself. And you need four of these bearings with a uh, well, the inner diameter is 8 millimeter, outer diameter is 22, and the thickness is 7. So these are all the parts you uh, have to buy for this upgrade. Uh, I've bought them from uh, RepRap World, and I will put all these components into the description of this video. Uh, one more thing, the screw, I have already placed it on this bracket, which I'm going to put here. I've screwed this already on. I've placed uh, M3 inserts. And as you probably already know, I have fallen in love with these uh, inserts. I've bought a bunch of them, 500 to be exact. That will uh, keep me going for, uh, for a while. Yeah, I will of course place this on uh, on Thingiverse so you can print it yourself. I've printed this out of uh, PETG transparent blue like I do with all the uh, upgrades of this printer because it looks awesome, I think, especially in combination with this uh, brass. These two are replaced with these. Well, this color is similar, but there are two, well, yeah, the uh, pulleys and bearings are placed in here. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I haven't done this 
before, so maybe it will fail. Yeah, let's find out. isn't running smooth at all. I'm going to add the second one and see if this actually works. And if it does, then I will do a minor redesign, which yeah leaves a little more room because it's everything is a bit too close to each other. Yes, go on. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, this is not going to work. I could have edited it. Um, in such a way that it looks like everything fits perfectly the first time oh, and everything yeah. went well. <laughs> but if I did, then I would have fooled you. Yesterday me left this carnage behind with this um, partially demolished printer. And today me is um, going to solve it. Okay, it's day three. It still didn't fit. And I've made again uh, a redesign. And what I've did this time is all these holes are slotted holes. Because it turns out something I actually already knew that the measurements of this printer aren't spot on, so we have to compensate a bit with uh, the slotted holes so everything can be adjusted a little. Yeah, they say a third time's a charm. I'll remove these and add these and then uh, try it again. I'm happy that this, all the measurements aren't perfect. So that's the whole reason for me to start these, uh, these videos. To show you how you can get a cheap printer and make it very accurate. Oh damn, oh this runs so smooth. Now I'm going to tighten this, then I'm going to adjust it. And then I have my DLC axis. I have fixed this, fixed this pulley. The only thing that isn't fixed right now is this pulley. Because now I can... Um, move this rod up and down in this pulley to make this perfectly horizontal to the base. I'm going to measure the distance between the base and the top of this gantry. And on the other side, until both sides are the same height. Okay, now I'm going to add these uh, Z rods, sorry, these, these Z braces. I'm 
of course not going to film that because I already did in my previous video. The Z braces are on. This is the combination with the original Z brace as in my previous video together with this dual Z axis. I think I will also uh, upload uh, only the dual Z axis so you can choose between well both or uh, indi individually. I have yeah, made sure that this beam is perpendicular to that one like in my previous video. This beam is perfectly perpendicular to this one. And another cool thing is that while well, the frame is super stiff and <laughs> this Z country I can just That's not possible with the, uh, the stock and the three. Last step, now everything comes together. It's uh, <laughs> making the, the levelest print bed of all print beds <laughs> of the M3. Yeah, I have this glass print bed, which I think is a lot easier to, uh, to level. It has one side with its uh, texture on it and the other side is completely flat. So I will Put, place it uh, flat side up. Accidentally bought two of them. One backup plate. Yeah, and now you see why I have added this uh, quick tool change. Yeah, you can add tools to it, but you can also add this DTI holder. If I'm uh, replacing the nozzle, then I will use this uh, adjustable Z-stop to adjust the height. But now I'm sure that the bed is flat, remains flat. Now I'm convinced that I can print accurately with this printer. Well, that's it for this video. Oh, whoop. Wait, put this back on. And this was it for this video. I really hope you have enjoyed watching. And if you did, then uh, yeah, please hit that like button. Oh, wait, wait. <laughs> um, yeah, maybe kind of an important thing. I was already shutting everything uh, down. Maybe kind of an important thing is that, yeah, <laughs> you still have to add the power supply somewhere. I'm not going to make this video any longer, but yeah, I've seen that there are some uh, power supply mod upgrades on uh, Thingiverse uh, with which you can place this power supply over there. In the next video, I will have added this power supply, I think on that spot over there. Yes, I want to make an enclosure, of course, of this machine so I can print more difficult materials like nylon and ABS. If you do this upgrade, you have to find another place for this power supply. I'm going to give you that in the next video. Again, thanks for watching and um, see you in the next video. Bye.